Good morning, Internet. Welcome back to Matic Film Society. And today we're gonna to take a look at some of the main mistakes that I made when I was trying to learn how to shoot film. I've been shooting digital for about 10 years now, but I've only been shooting film for about three years. And over the course of the first year that I was shooting film, I made an astronomical amount of mistakes. So what we're gonna take a look at here is the five most common mistakes that I see new photographers making when they're getting into film. And this will also be really useful for anybody who has no photography experience at all. They've never shot digital, but they wanna get into film. Pick up any random old film camera. I promise you it will be one of the best things that you've ever done for your life. The memories and the things that get created out of film are just so much more tangible and so much more important to me than any of my vast digital work. I have hundreds of thousands of digital images that I've shot, but no matter what, every time that I get film images back, there's just something so much more real about them. There's something that makes you love them so much more than digital. So, if you want to learn how to shoot some film photography, these are the top five mistakes that I made that hopefully you can avoid. The first mistake everybody makes when getting into film photography is they see the prices. And the truth is you do not need a very high-end film camera. So this is what I would consider one of the absolute very best film cameras to get into if you want to start learning film photography. This is the Fujika AX3. And if you want one of these with a lens, with a couple lenses, you can pick these up off of eBay. I'm seeing them go for 20 to 80 bucks. These are incredible workhorses. It's a full metal cage and they last forever. And what you wanna really look for when you're finding your first film camera is it's probably gonna be ideal to find something with a built-in light meter. Typically SLRs, single lens reflex cameras, most of them are going to have built-in light meters. And that's going to really help you when you're trying to learn the exposure triangle and that's the difference between your shutter speed, your ISO of your film, and your aperture to give you a properly exposed image. Because when it comes to film, one of the most important things to remember is that the vast majority of what makes a beautiful film image is having it properly exposed. It's not the camera that makes the beautiful image. The camera, it's all just the film. Like whatever film you put in there is going to look good. The lens is semi-important. This is a $10 lens. And some of these images that I've shot with this camera that came out of this cheap $10 lens are absolutely beautiful. So don't think you need expensive stuff. Look for something like the Pentax K1000 or the, let's see, the Minolta OM-1, I believe. I'm not sure if that's Minolta. I know, it's, oh, it's the Olympus OM-1 or a Minolta or honestly, the king of the world is the Canon AE-1 or the AE-1 program. The AE-1 program will give you the option to do auto exposure which I have some reservations against. Maybe you shouldn't get something that just does auto, but if it's your very first time shooting film, that's also a really good option. To prove that you don't need high-end, professional-grade, thousand-dollar cameras to shoot beautiful film images, take a look up here at this video that I did where I shot an entire month of surf photography in Nicaragua, and I literally only used this camera and a hundred dollar little waterproof Canon camera to shoot out in the water with. And like this camera, very, very cheap, 50 bucks. The Aqua Boy, a hundred bucks. And those make some spectacular images. The second mistake that I see a lot of people make when dealing with film photography and trying to learn it is they just make it way too complicated. What I would suggest if you're really just trying to get into film photography and let's say that an SLR is a little scary for you, there's different options. Another option is a very simple point and shoot camera. This is the Olympus XA and it's so simple. All you do is literally point it and shoot it. It's so simple. The thing with photography and specifically film photography is that when you try to overcomplicate it and make it harder than it actually is, you lose those simple candid moments of film photography. You know, it's catching moments with your friends on a very quick, simple snapshot camera 
that's what really makes film come alive because the way that it renders people and skin tones and honestly the entire environment is really where film shines. In the digital world, there's just something not exactly the same about it. And so don't worry about advanced lighting setups. Don't worry about having a studio to shoot in or that everything is dialed in perfectly. Put a bunch of light into it. Don't worry about overexposing it too much because film does like to be overexposed. A lot of those pastel-y kind of vintage-y looking images are because the film was really exposed very well. It was brightened up quite a bit with hitting a lot of light to it. That's what makes film so beautiful. Another mistake that I made while shooting film and learning everything about it is, I know it sounds stupid, but it's not digital. You only get 36 frames per roll, and with today's film prices, that's coming out to like almost a dollar, sometimes two dollars per frame. What you really need to do is just slow down. Don't worry so much about missing shots. Honestly, I have this kind of idea that I let the camera do a lot of the thinking and the work for me because I notice that a lot of times I'll go to take an image and I won't have wound my shutter, you know? And so I go to press the button and it doesn't actually work. And for some reason I have this like weird notion that that means the camera didn't actually want to take that picture. You know, it's not my fault. Take a little bit of a breath look at what you think is pretty and show the world how you see that. That's what's going to make it your photography, not, hey, these are the images that I shot that look like Peter McKinnon. These are the images that I shot that look like Jimmy Chin. Or look, I did a whole bunch of images to look just like Jason Cumberfeld saw them. Like, that's not what you're going for. You're going for, these are how I see the world. That's what you need to do. And so slow down and find out how you see the world and then try and show it to us. That's what other photographers and other people who are going to view your work, that's what they wanna see. Typically in digital, people will take a five second burst, shoot you know, 20, 30, 40 images, and then pick the one they like the best. It's called the spray and pray method. And yeah, I've done it, I've done it a lot. I shoot a lot of high speed things when I'm shooting digital, but it's just, it feels so much better to take one image and know that that's the image when you timed it, when you wanted to freeze the action or preserve that moment. The fourth thing that I've noticed about people who have tried to get into film photography and then backed out of it because they didn't like it was you have to have a really good lab. And I can't stress this enough. Having a good, proper, professional photo lab, develop, and scan your images. You don't always have to get them scanned, but getting them developed. Honestly, I've tried developing my own film and I'm not good at it. I've tried scanning my own film, I'm not good at it. I much prefer just sending it to an incredible lab that knows what they're doing. And so like, if you're out here, say you're here in Utah where we are, Essential Photo Supply is absolutely top notch. I have given them some of the worst shot rolls. They weren't exposed properly and they still get some of the most beautiful images sent back to me. They're so knowledgeable and they know what they're talking about and their lab technicians really care about producing the best quality work that they can. Really take your time to find a really good lab that will produce better images for you because it'll make you love your photography so much more, I promise. The last mistake that I see new photographers making when getting into film is forgetting to meter properly. And so sometimes people aren't even metering for film and I don't know how they're doing that. It seems like black magic voodoo to me. Um, but so you need to really pay attention to the light and the shadows and what's happening. And typically when you're shooting digital, if you're coming from that area, you typically like to meter for the highlights and have your shadows a little bit darker because you can raise those in post and retrieve your shadow data. But with film, what you wanna do is you actually wanna meter for the shadows instead of the highlights. And so how I put that into practice is if I've got a scene that I'm looking at, I will set my meter for the darkest area of the scene and then make sure that I have those settings locked in, recompose to where I need it to be and then fire it. And so I'm not too worried about blowing out my skies because film retains so much data in the highlights, it loves light, it's just hungry for it. And so you almost never completely lose all of that data in your lights, but it's really, really difficult on film to bring back shadow data. Once you've lost it, it kind of just mushes out into like a dullish brown gray gook. And yeah, you can kind of get some like creative 
ways to do that if you totally ruin your shadows and make them totally black you can get some really unique silhouette looks but these are new photographer mistakes that we see on film take your time to shoot a couple rolls and then get into doing the weird art stuff here's a quick little bonus tip for your new photographers out there that are just getting into shooting film dude if you can find superior or just standard Fuji Film 400 speed daylight. I can usually find them in three packs at Walmart. They don't have it all the time, and a lot of times it says online that they have it, then you go to the store and they don't have it. But these little three packs of film, it'll be 18 bucks for a three pack. And so you get three rolls of 36 exposures for 18 bucks. And honestly, like I shoot with this film so often because the colors it renders are so beautiful. It's not like that portrait, vintage-y, look how like pastel -y and beautiful I am. I love Portra, it's great. I shoot it as much as I can, but it's expensive. And so if you want some properly kick-ass film that is just cream of the crop for how much it costs, you should definitely look into getting some of that cheap Walmart film. So if you've made it this far, what we'd really appreciate is if you could like this video, subscribe to the channel. What we do here is we do film photography, we do digital photography, and we do video production work. And so we're gonna have tutorials and a whole bunch of stuff about all aspects of essentially cameras and what you can do with them, what you can make with them. And so join us, we're gonna make a whole bunch of really great stuff.